AI is all around us. Google searches, voice recognition, even your camera's face detection. Artificial intelligence has embedded itself into our everyday lives. But is AI good for humanity? That's a question many of us are asking. And to answer this question, we need to look at how AI is impacting our lives today. One of the most affected areas is healthcare. Artificial intelligence is improving diagnosis and making it faster. And a great example is the field of pathology. Pathologists look at cell images and they count, measure, or analyze these cells. They take information from these images to diagnose a patient and then treat them. But usually, pathologists would be looking at their images, gathering information for hours. At SickKids Hospital in Toronto, I'm creating an AI that can gather the same information in a few seconds and give it to the pathologist so that they can focus on what matters, actually diagnosing and treating the patient. AI is making us more productive and it's improving our quality of life. And healthcare is just one example. But what really is artificial intelligence? It's often talked about like one single technology, but really AI is a bunch of technologies that work together in harmony to create intelligence. Technologies like machine learning that give machines the ability to learn patterns from data. Computer vision, the ability to see, perceive, and understand the world around us. Natural language processing, understanding language. And robotics, giving the ability to move in the physical world. By mastering these technologies, we hope to achieve AI of human-level intelligence. But what we're lacking is an interconnectivity between these fields. We've made great progress in AI. AI is much better than it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago. It's much better, but there's no interconnectivity. We're just getting really good at each of these fields. And interconnectivity between these technologies is a major contributing factor to achieving what we call artificial general intelligence, or AGI. Humans are good at what AI is bad at, and AI is good at what humans are bad at. AI can make quick, repetitive tasks that usually take us a long time, and humans can make complex decisions using prior knowledge and external factors. We're creative, we can come up with new ideas, we have emotions, and this is what AI lacks today. AGI is the quest to close that gap, to make AI good at what AI is good at, and at what humans are good at, to make AI good at everything. So why is achieving AGI important? It'll allow us to solve some of the toughest and most interesting problems of our time. Because humans can only look at a few variables at a time and understand how they relate, a few things. But computers can look at billions of data points and understand how each one relates to each other. So imagine if you had the ability to understand how billions of particles relate to form molecules and how these molecules interact to form larger substances. Imagine having that power. That is the power of AGI. Cancer, gone. Interstellar travel, easy. Bridging quantum mechanics and general relativity and a theory of everything, we've got it with AGI. But we can't reach this point until we understand ourselves and implement learnings from our own brain inside of a machine. Because our brain is already a general intelligence. It can already do all of these fields together. We are trying to reach AGI to solve some of the world's toughest problems, and the way we are getting there is through an algorithm called an artificial neural network. It's the current imitation of a human brain inside a machine. And we need to understand the differences between a neural network and our brain to know what we can change to possibly get to more general AI. Neural networks are made up of mathematical units called neurons. These neurons are stacked in a column called layers, and each layer receives information from the previous one. Now, each neuron learns a very simple pattern. And when you have millions of neurons together, you can learn very complicated patterns. And thus, the neural network can learn. And to make better neural networks that learn more, what we've been doing is making networks deeper so that we can learn more patterns more complicated patterns. But having deeper networks doesn't necessarily translate into consciousness and creativity. Consciousness is more complex than that. Current neuroscience research suggests that it arises from the different parts of our brain working together in harmony, the interconnectedness of our brain. So simply making networks deeper won't cut it. 
Instead, we need to be thinking, how are these neural networks different from our brain, and implementing the changes to try to get to more general AI, looking at our already general intelligence and learning from that. Now, one of the biggest differences between current neural networks and our brain is that neural networks move information in a straight line. The information goes from this layer to that layer to the next layer to the next in a straight line. Whereas neural networks act like a line to learn, our brain is organic. It loops in on itself many times. And so if we know that our brain is very organic, why aren't we making more organic neural networks so that possibly we can get to general AI? The reason is we don't know how to learn on such a complicated structure. We only know how to make AI learn on a linear structure. So maybe making AI that can learn on a complicated and organic structure like our brain is the key to general AI, which is why my research at the University of Waterloo in Canada has been focused on making neural networks that act more like our brain while making sure that they can learn. So let's say we achieve AGI sometime in the future. The question you may be asking is, when AI will do everything, what will humans do? What will happen to us? What is the danger? Which each new innovation comes positive and negative possibilities. And as we program the AI of the future and set its goals, the danger lies in the sub-goals that the AI creates on its own. Every AI needs an objective, which we set. But the danger lies in what we cannot control. A sub-goal is a lesser goal that forms in part of a greater goal. If I told an AI, your main goal is to improve living conditions on Earth. That's its main goal. But a sub-goal that it may develop on its own is eradicate half the world's population to improve living conditions. And that's definitely not good for us. Now, what if an AI could set its own goals? Then sub-goals aren't even the only problem. We have the main goals to worry about, too. They could negatively impact humanity. And so the danger from AI comes when the AI's goals and humans' goals don't align. We need to create a goal alignment between AI and humans to ensure a positive future. But how do we align our goals? One possible way is encoding human values into a machine, because values can't be broken. But this brings two problems, a technical problem and a political problem. The technical problem, we don't know how to encode values. How do we encode values into a machine? The political problem, which values do we choose? As cultures change around the world, values change around the world. So is one set of values better, better than another set of values? Should we choose? How do we choose? We don't know. We cannot stop progress. We can only prepare for the future. So we need to be asking these questions now so that when we reach AGI, we are prepared. Now, this is one possible future, having AGI as its own separate intelligent being. But there is another possibility. As technology becomes more intelligent, our relationship with technology will evolve. And if we want the goals between technology and humans to align, we should make a mutual benefit arise from that relationship. Both AI and humans should benefit. And how do we make a mutual benefit? One possibility is through the merging of man and machine, resulting in one advanced organism. Goal alignment is achieved since AI and humans have the same goals, if they're the same. And Emerge benefits both AI and humans since each gets the skills that they lack. Humans get access to computers' fast computation and their ability to visualize these billions of particles. Now we will be able to understand how billions of particles relate to form molecules and how those molecules relate to form larger substances. We will have that power. Emerge amplifies human intelligence and turns us into a mix of human and machine intelligence. In this way, we achieve AGI while ensuring goal alignment. And today, there are two technologies that could lead us here. Artificial intelligence and brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. BCIs collect electrical signals from our brain and use them to control a machine. The problem is that these signals are very complex. We don't know what most of these signals mean. They're just too complicated for humans to understand. But AI can learn much more complicated patterns than humans can. So we could use AI to help understand ourselves, understand our own brain signals, and unlock the key to BCIs. 
AI and BCIs could connect our minds to machines. The line between man and machine could disappear, and humans will have entered their next evolutionary step. AGI will enable us to solve some of the world's toughest and most interesting problems. But as we create AGI, we must achieve a harmony between AI and humans. We need to create a seamless pathway connecting the two to ensure goal alignment. And achieving an integration with AI won't only suppress the danger of AI, but it will give us computational powers that we have only dreamed of. And with these newfound powers, we will solve some of the most interesting and toughest problems of the future. Thank you.